Okay, this one is about reversing valves. Used on heat pumps to change the inside coil to the outside coil and vice versa. Uh, fairly complicated valve. Uh, my father worked in these things in the 60s. Had a lot of troubles with them, a lot of hang-ups and so on. Uh, they seem to be quite a bit better now, obviously. It's quite a bit lighter. We're going to take a look at the inside of this thing and see if we can figure out how it works. Okay, this top port here, that's discharge. That comes straight off the compressor. It's always discharge. This is always suction to the compressor. These two ports here, depending on where the slide is, will either go to the outdoor coil or the indoor coil. And they will actually direct this flow here or here. And they will direct this flow here or here. Now it is a pilot operated valve, meaning there is a solenoid, and I'll turn that thing over a little bit and we'll take a look at the where the solenoid goes. Uh, and the solenoid actually just switches the uh, pressures. Let's take a look at the other side of this thing. Uh, probably fall apart now. Okay, there's your solenoid where your solenoid would mount. It slides right on here and it moves a very small valve inside here when it's energized and it takes low pressure from here. Remember I said this was suction and it takes high pressure from here and it switches which way the high and low pressures go. Now they can switch it so that high pressure goes here and low pressure goes here or switch it around. So let's take a look at what's inside it. Now, here's what we've got inside here. This slide moves back and forth. When there's a high pressure on this side from that little tube, then it pushes this way, uh, this plunger this way, and the low pressure side allows it to come over that way. And then when it's reversed, then the pressure comes the other way. These are the seals here that uh, seal off between here and here. Now you can see this is a little uh, sort of a U-shaped thing here. And when it's in this position, this suction, which is right there, goes up through here and out here. When it shifts, then the suction right here to here. So you can see how that actually reverses. Now what we haven't talked about is how this discharge line here reverses. Okay, the discharge line simply goes right in oops, like that and it goes to the body of the valve, the open part of the valve. You can see it's going right in there to the open part of the valve so that when this is in this position it can go from the discharge line here down to here and goes out there then when it shifts the other way it goes from the discharge line here out there now because these are a uh, pilot operated valve it's important that this thing move back and forth properly and that these lines and I'll turn this upside down again that these lines are clear if they block any one of those blocks the valve won't work and problems with this valve are oftentimes uh, if there's a lot of garbage from a compressor replacement or something like that then it'll block, you'll get garbage in these lines and it just won't shift or it may shift part way. 
If you have one that doesn't shift, there's a couple of ways you can diagnose it. Uh, one thing, you can pull the solenoid off of here. If the solenoid is energized, like most of them are energized in cool, some are energized in heat, but if it was in cool and it hadn't shifted, if I pulled this off, then it should shift back the other way. If it does not do that, then uh, the valve is probably bad. Uh, you can also take a permanent magnet and run it across here, and that will move the plunger back and forth. Um, and that may do it. Now, by the way, if you do take this solenoid off, in order to test this, do not leave it hang. If you leave it hang very long, it will burn itself up. Uh, it's not operating as it should when it's in that position, so it's going to draw too much power and burn itself up. Okay. Uh, other things that can happen to these things are uh, if you put too much heat when you're doing your brazing, this uh, part here has got a little Teflon slide on the bottom of it. That can melt. And of course this is made of plastic, so it can melt. These seals here could go bad. That can also go bad if there's uh, garbage in the system. Uh, I'm going to give you a little closer view of these things so that you have a little better idea of what's going on. Okay, uh, so these things could get overheated when uh, the brazing's done, and certainly if when you're installing this, if you tweak these valves at all, you could damage the surface under here. Now it's pretty heavy, they may put a big copper uh, bar in there for this to slide on, so it's hard to do that. Uh, however, this one here, this discharge one, no, you could tweak it there. If there's any damage to this tube, this thing will not slide, it just stops. It just completely stops. Uh, it may get halfway or something like that. Another diagnosis issue with these things is uh, they'll shift part way. Instead of being all the way over, there'll be something like that. And you'll get gases moving uh, straight from here into here. So if it goes from the discharge, and ends up here, it's going to go straight back to the compressor. If it does that, it usually takes out the compressor. And uh, then you got two problems. You come on the job for a uh, bad compressor because it's burned up, and you end up putting the compressor in. You can't test the reversing valve until you got a pressure difference, so the compressor has to run. And uh, you end up finding out that the reversing valve was broken and it's what caused the compressor to fail so you got to take it apart and do it all over again. But just remember these things should slide all the way back and forth. They should slide smoothly. This one actually does pretty well. Uh, if it slides part way and the compressor is running when you get there it, it, sounds, it sounds and acts just like bad valves in a compressor. It's very, very similar. The only way you can really tell is to perhaps take some temperatures across this thing um, and try to get temperature differences. I can't say that's going to help either. Um, it's a real tough diagnosis between compressor valve failure and reversing valve failure, and I'm not sure every time you're going to get it. So uh, that is the reversing valve. That's the way it slides. This moving up like that. And when it's in this position, it's moving like that. And the one that is uncovered will take the uh, discharge and run it through there. And of course this way it will run it through there. Should be depending on who you talk to, uh, 
should be no more than three degrees difference across the valve or six degrees difference. Two different brands told me the two different things. So if I went from here to here, I should have either three or six degree difference max, and here to here, same thing, and here to uh, whichever one of these should not be more than three or six degrees. Usually they're far in excess of that if they are broken. And that is the reversing valve disassembly.